Okay, another dream I had. Well, I'm just suddenly making a bunch of videos, I guess. I thought I was done making videos. Because I haven't made anything for a while. Alright. Um, what you see behind me is my hideout place where I'm at. Devil won't be able to find me here for a long time. <laughs> anyway. It's beautiful. <laughs> I've been obeying God. I would say psychologically, I'm one of the most prepared people ready for World War III. <laughs> I'm just saying. Now, what do you think happened to the Donald Cook? What do you think happened to the USS Fitzgerald? What do you think happened to the uh, USS John McCain? How could a, a, a military ship be so disabled... That a freighter can just come and crash right into it. Something to think about. So Jesus is Lord. Time's running out. Here's another dream I had. I saw. Well. I don't know how to. Basically I saw like. A little girl who had got sunburned. And she was hundreds of miles away. From where there was a nuke. But the flash. She didn't know what to do. She just saw this flash. And all of a sudden. Two seconds later. She's completely sunburned. Through her clothing. Face. Next. You know. And her skin was peeling off. Just saying. I know it's sad. But you need to tell your kids. See, this is the wise virgin, foolish virgin thing. If you're a foolish virgin and you're standing there saying, no, the rapture is all going to happen before any of that, you're not going to teach your kids <clears throat> to be ready and not take the mark of the beast. And that's exactly what the devil wants you to do because then when you're in a jail cell, and your whole family, they're going to march your whole family right into that jail cell with you. Look, Daddy, we took the mark. And your whole family just took the mark of the beast. And they say, come home with us, Daddy. And then the guards are going to come in and take the kids out and say, you can be home by 4 o'clock today if you just go ahead and have the implant. Comes with a little mark that says, in the name of Allah 666 on it. If any of those ISIS guys out there come after you, you show them that mark. If they mess with you after that, they're the ones who get in trouble. So, in a sense, this mark is going to save you and give special praise and thanks to Obama because it was his idea to give you a mark on your right hand that will prevent all those Muslims that have just immigrated to the United States. They're, they're told they've been given the okay to just basically harass, rape, whatever they want to do. Anyone who doesn't have the mark. So you want to get in there and get that mark taken care of. That's what they're going to be telling you. And then you're going to have ISIS guys going through neighborhoods. Dragging people out of their homes. I got it, I got it. And oh, I didn't see it. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Go back into your home. And then they go into the basement and find a group of people who don't have the mark. Next thing you know, Muhammad over here is going to rape your 12-year-old daughter. Unless you take the mark, you know, it's just going to be crazy. Well, that's Hakmed, and that's Amid, and that's, you know, and they're here to take you. And they'll even, you know, bend people over. And, you know, prison style, anal rape. Oh, but if you take the mark, they're not allowed to mess with you at all. You'll be, you'll be safe. And then... In order, also, part of the official taking of the mark is to be especially thankful and grateful to Obama. Get on your knees before that little video monitor over there and bow. <clears throat> and you're going to hell. You know, and that's the type of thing. <laughs> and you didn't tell your kids. You told your kids, don't take the mark of the beast. We're going to have to struggle through this thing. That might not have happened. The wise and foolish virgins. The wise virgins like kids. Listen. 
There's this thing that's coming. Nobody, don't take it. Don't do it. Foolish ones are saying, well, don't worry about that one. Don't worry about that one. Don't even read the book of Revelation because none of that applies to us. We're all just going to be raptured out. That's basically, if you wanted to, you could say that. For, according to their, you know, the pre-tribulation, the pre-tribulation rapture people, basically, they could put their head in the sand and say, you don't even have to read from Revelation chapter 3 on. None of that applies to us. Revelation chapter 4, where God says to John, or 5, wherever it is, where God says, come up here. That's where the rapture happens. Anything that happens after that point in the book of Revelation doesn't apply to any of us. <laughs> okay. That's a foolish verse. That's how, that's how you recognize the fools. Then the wise ones are going to have extra oil and wine and vinegar and supplies in their garage and in their basement. Knowing, having read the signs of the time, knowing that before the rapture, reading their Bible. Okay, before the rapture, if I, I don't have my Bible with me, I'll just pretend like this is my Bible. Okay, it uh, looks like according to Revelation chapter 14, the gospel goes out, uh, 14 verse 6, and then a second angel followed. Revelation 14, 7 and 8, Babylon the Great falls. And then a, a third angel follows and gives a warning about the mark of the beast. So the mark of the beast comes out. So the gospel goes out, then, then Babylon the Great falls, then the mark of the beast comes out. Okay, and then what happens? And then there's great persecution. This calls for patient endurance. Oh, and then look, Revelation chapter 14, verse 14 we see a, a fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh angel who are in charge of the harvest of the earth. The rapture. So, okay, that makes sense. It's really simple. Revelation chapter 14, starting at verse 6, as, after the gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people, then Babylon the Great falls, then the mark of the beast comes out, then there's great persecution, and this calls for patient endurance. Then God says, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. Then the harvest of the earth, the rapture. So a wise virgin says, okay, wife, kids, huddle together. Listen, Babylon the Great's going to fall. Then the mark of the beast is going to come out. We need to be ready. You understand what I'm saying? Even the foolish virgins, children, take the mark of the beast. People who say, oh, all, every child under age seven is raptured. Lie. It's not true. <clears throat> it's not true. Little Mahakmed, who's been raised by his mom to jihad against Christians, he might be only five years old. He's not getting raptured. Just saying. <clears throat> Little Johnny uh, Disobedience, whose mom and dad teach a pre-tribulation rapture, and he's been taught pre-tribulation rapture. This little kid, he's not going to know any better. And in other words, yeah, the rapture's not going to suddenly rapture up all the little kids. It's not going to happen. There's wicked, evil, little Judas Iscariot kids that are born every day. Just saying. Jesus himself said to uh, about Judas, who said it would have been better for him to not have ever been born. Just saying. <clears throat> so World War Three is coming. Get ready. And the last thing I felt like God wanted me to remind everybody is it's not a war of America versus the world, although it may seem that way. It's actually the world against. God's people. Now, not the lukewarm, not the foolish virgins. Take the foolish virgins and the lukewarm, throw them out. It's a war against God's people. That's what World War III really comes down to at the end. <clears throat>